What up dudes? It's Gaz and welcome back to the Warframe video. So today we have the Zombie Ash build. Put this together on stream last night and it's really good and easy just like how every zombie build has been so far and will be going forward. Before we go over this build guide meant for high level missions and steel path and all that, make sure you're sub this channel. We do daily Warframe video uploads, build videos, news videos, and the like. Also hit that like button as well, lets more people see this video. I really appreciate all support recently, guys. I'll also be live on stream right after this video goes up. Uh, change of plans, I actually will be streaming tonight, was not planning on it tonight, but yeah. I'll be live driving stuff out if you want to come hang out. Maybe put some new builds together with me on stream. Alright, let's get right into it. So what is the zombie Ash? Well, Ash is an invisibility character in Warframe, and he's got some good damage. And he looks cool. So what we're going to be doing right now, we're using a special ability from another character. So if you look in the bottom right corner, our energy bar is completely full, 150 energy out of 150 energy. We cast our abilities, our ability, our energy is down to zero, and now the energy bar is going all the way up. That's the idea of the build. Through this sustaining of uh, energy, multi uh, energy like regen, we can just stay perma and viz because the energy regen we get are provided is high enough that we can regen all the energy we need by the time our invisibility runs out. So when the invisibility runs out. Instantly recast it. You're invisible again. You will never... Basically, as long as you don't, like, run into a nullifier bubble, like, three times in a row, you will never not be able to go invis. And with this, we can actually get some damage buffs while we're in invisibility as Ash. So with our setup right now, it's going to be uh, guaranteed headshots with the Scourge. So we throw the Scourge out. Fire our dual tox. Guaranteed headshots. Go back and invis instantly. And we get a crit uh, chance buff through Smoke Shadow. Which can be very good for high-level uh, Demolus and Thrax and just whatever, basically. So, we're not really using his other abilities. This is not really a Slash build, because the thing about this build is that, you know, Sla Ash has a passive that makes Slash procs stronger, but Slash procs take some time to actually DOT the enemy. This is a build that will insta-kill enemies. It uh, does not rely on DOT. Additionally, it does not rely on the Seeking Shuriken Augment, because I find the Seeking Shuriken Augment to be very unreliable in... Uh, you know, crucial situations. Like, that Demolus about to jump on that thing right now. I need this Demolus dead. Sometimes Seeking Shuriken just doesn't work. So I decided to not go with Seeking Shuriken. Because when I make these builds, I want to eliminate the problems I've found with these characters over the years. Now, there is one problem you can't really fix, uh, at least through the, the build I have today, and that's going to be the duration of the invisibility of Smoke Shadow is just kind of low. I mean, it just is. 8-second base duration. Scaling up with mods, we're at 20-second duration on the invis. That's like one of the low, that is probably actually the lowest base invis in the entire game. I think even Varuna has longer invis than that. Uh, but that's okay because, uh, you know, we have enough energy anyway. So as long as we just recast every 20 seconds, we're good to go. Uh, and we have the crit chance augment. We have the 150% increased crit chance from Smoke Shadow. The big, uh, the big item here is going to be Nourish from Grendel, giving increased energy multiplier and built-in viral damage. With the zombie setup we've gone for uh, in this build, we are going to be doing full armor strip and full viral debuff, as well as just insta-killing very high-level enemies, uh, while being extremely safe while doing it. Our last ability, Blade Storm, is mainly just used here to stun, uh, stun Acolytes in place, as this stabbing ability will stab the Acolyte, and the Acolyte will just be like, hey, wh who stabbed me? And they'll just stand there for a little bit. Let you easily take care of them with no Magus Lockdown stunning required. So yeah, going over the build and the shards, we've got three Power Strength shards. Now these can definitely be replaced for something else if you prefer, like Casting Speed, Parkour Velocity, and the like. Because we are overkill on Strength for the most part. We've got 288% Strength, giving our Nourish Multiplier a 3.88 uh, before Molt Augmented. The typical Zombie setup does bring the two green Emerald Archon Shards, increasing Corrosive procs. On uh, enemies up to 14, with these two put together, we can fully remove enemy armor, uh, as long as it's not Acolyte. Acolytes will be going up to 8 Corrosive procs, which will very, like, soften them up a lot. But yeah, for, for Acolytes, you cannot get full armor strip with just two normal green shards. But yeah, these are all, these are all, uh, besides the green shards, these are definitely about the personal preference. You can go duration here, casting speed here, whatever. Uh, for the build, it will look very similar to the Revenant build, if you remember that from a couple weeks ago, uh, where we are using Energy Nexus. And Blind Rage, one of the big cruxes of this build. These two together are very nice. We've also got another uh, Power Strength mod with Umbral Intensify. And the rest of the stuff is just going to be quality of life. we got Smoke Shadow for increased crit on our dual tox. It's just the orange crits and red crits. Rolling Guard, because sometimes a fire AoE will hit you, and you want to get that fire AoE off of you. Uh, brief Respite for when our shield breaks, we can cast an ability like Nourish to get some shields back, which will give us some brief shield getting time to just basically not die from a heat proc, hopefully. 
Prime Sure Footed because if you have it, you should run it. If you don't have this, you got other options like Power Drift or something like that. Uh, for Narrow Minded, this is, we don't really need range on this build. The range is basically just to make it where our radius of our smoke screen is, uh, is larger for hitting our teammates because th this invisibility crit buff can work on your teammates too. Also gives you more radius on Nourish, but really it's fine. It does not really matter. Uh, we're mainly focusing on ourselves right now, to be honest. They're kind of selfish build. But yeah, with this big buff, we can just take care of uh, high level enemies very easily. Prime continuity for a longer duration on Invis. Same with Narrow Minded. It's only an 8 second Invis, but we do want to make it longer because it's just annoying. It, recasting it every 8 seconds would be very annoying. Also increases the duration of Nourish, too. We're at about a minute of duration on Nourish. Natural Talent, because we have to recast our invisibility every 20 seconds. This will make the invisibility animation faster, so you can just go invis quicker. Uh, that's the, the main reason I have this on here. Energy Nexus gives three second, or three energy per second, uh, just built in from doing nothing. That's why it scales really well with Nourish, multiplying it to like 12 or more. Molt Augmented on kill, get increased power strength, one of the best arcanes in the game. Make sure you got this. Um, and arcane Precision. This is one that's definitely a more of a flex arcane slot. Um, it will give you increased uh, pistol damage on headshot. And since we're doing dual toxic and Karnat in this video, uh, you'll be doing tons and tons of headshots and tons and tons of damage. 300% increased damage can be going a pretty long way when uh, we're hitting so hard these crits. So let's get some Steel Path gameplay here, and I'm going to show you the builds for the weapons. Uh, but spoiler, the, the, the builds of the weapons are pretty straightforward. We're trying to get our corrosive procs to 14 corrosive procs as quickly as possible. And additionally, too, just looking at looking in the background footage, if you were using Seeking Shuriken, your ad clear would be a lot worse because. You, I think Seeking Shuriken's only like, what, one or two enemies at a time? With the Dual Toxist and Corrosive procs, you can take out like 10 enemies at a time and remove their armor at the, like, while you're DPS them. So just really nice. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it's going to be in more builds going forward for a reason. Now, as far as the reason I'm using the secondary here is because this is a Disruption build. And in, in Disruption, when you pick up those keys to do like the towers and all that, you are... You, you basically pick up a key and carry it around. You are stuck with your secondary. You cannot DPS with your primary in that situation. Uh, that's why I brought a primary that doesn't actually matter. And there's a demo that's like instantly dying. The primary doesn't actually matter. The primary is just a little bit extra extra utility here. Because our Scourge gives us guaranteed headshots. Uh, making it where we're getting our guaranteed Incarnate ammo for the weapon we're DPSing with the Dual Tie System card. So, uh, yeah, in Disruption, he's really good. In uh, Cascade, he's really good too. Um, you know, you might be like, okay, well... The build works, sure, the build works, but why are you even playing Ash? You're not doing slash procs. And to that, I answer, well, I want to play Ash. And also, smokes, like I said earlier, Seeking Shuriken doesn't seem to work for me sometimes. So I'm solving the issue of Ash armor strip being unreliable. We're going with the zombie setup, which I know you're going to see more zombie setups from me in the future. Uh, if they do end up nerfing anything in this setup, I'll be sure to let you know. But yeah, as of right now, these builds are so good that I'm going to keep making videos on them because I'm using them a lot and they're really, really effective. So um, yeah, so that's enough of the footage. Let's go over the, the rest of the builds and, uh, and I'll explain if I think this is worth it to you. And also, yeah, you could do this on Loki technically too. I just think it would be worse on Loki because Smoke Shadow is helping quite a bit here. Okay, so we are going to be using our Scourge. Now, this is the normal Scourge. You could use the Scourge Prime if you preferred. Uh, but yeah, the reason I'm using the Scourge uh, Normal, not the Scourge Prime, is because the Scourge Normal has uh, higher Riven stats. The Scourge Prime has better reload speed, which would be better for most players. But to me, my higher Riven stat is more important to me, so I've got a Scourge Riven on here. Scourge Prime has more or faster reload speed, and that is important to this build. But yeah, for right now, I'm just using the Scourge Normal. Same exact status chance, same exact, you know, things that matter for what we're doing. And we are using the, the full corrosive build on the Scourge. It has built-in corrosives that we're modding for high voltage and malignant force to make it more corrosive. 100% status chance on the primary shot. And the throw is pretty what we're using this for, though. We have all the fire rate mods we can fit on here and every reload mod as well. So uh, you just want to basically throw this thing out and then reload it. And then you'll have you'll be able to throw it again. Uh, we also have Amalgam Serration to make the movement speed of the character faster. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you how this works. So you have two options of how you can use this Scourge. Um, you can use it as a corrosive procker, which you won't really need on this build, to be honest. Um, but you could. So I'll throw on Nourish too, just to show how it is in a realistic situation. So you're right there. Fully viral proc, fully corrosive proc. Then we throw off the spear. AoE, guaranteed headshots. You cannot miss the headshots at that point. And yeah, they also got a couple procs on them too, just from the throw. So with Fractalized Reset, you, you reload this thing really fast. You can just throw it quite often, but you only have one spear out for your headshots at a time, so just keep that in mind. So yeah, that, this, this 
This weapon look can work on lots of frames for the zombie setup. I just chosen to go for Ash because I don't really play Ash as much as I used to. We have the dual toxicist Incarnon pistol right here with the Incarnons being Fevered Frenzy, Marksman's Hand, and Commodore's Fortune. Those are the best ones in my opinion. And as far as our build, if you don't have a dual toxicist ribbon, I highly recommend getting one. The main stat you should be looking for is going to be Punch Through because the only Punch Through mod in the game for pistols is not a very good mod. It's called Seeker. It costs 15 drain and only gives you 2.1 meters of punch through. A ribbon for punch through on the dual toxis will massively replace that mod and give you good AoE. So we've got punch through, multi shot, crit chance, minus zoom. Much better than that. So yeah, prioritize punch through and other good DPS or other stats that are DPS increased because punch through is not really a DPS stat, it's a quality of life stat. But yeah, that's what you should be going for on a Riven. If you don't have a Riven, that's where you put Seeker right there. I'm not going to say it's going to be good, but that's what you should do. And also, yeah, if you're on Ash, Put a silencer on your Scourge and on your pistol because even if you are invisible, enemies will shoot at where they hear you if you're firing a gun while invisible. So that's a big thing. If you're playing invisibility characters in this game, put a silencer on your gun or you might get shot with a rocket when you're not thinking about it. So good stuff there. Now the build is going to be corrosive focused. And yes, I do know once you get a headshot with the dual toxins, you get built in, built in toxin. But here's the thing, guys. When you go over body shots, it's not getting the built in toxin right away. So you... For this, it's going to be for, you know, all-arounder. Like, I just I jump up to the Demolist. No headshots required. He's instantly dead from my Corrosive procs and my Viral procs. That's what we got two Elemental mods on here. Also, you might notice there's no Bane mods. We're doing so much damage, we don't need Bane mods anymore with this zombie setup. So, yeah, go ahead and use it if you want to. As far as the melee, it d didn't actually get used, but here's what I got equipped. It's going to be a uh, Corrosive anti acolyte build. And we got melee exposure for more corrosive damage, and this is not used at all in my in the footage. So yeah, basically, good stuff here. And for the focus tree, we got Mana Eye Focus Tree. You could go someone else, or something else if you prefer. But yeah, forty percent more power strength. Why not? And for the Smita Combat, we've got a build for making you come back from the dead really fast. With aerial Bond, every kill while airborne gives you uh, a faster. It gives it a faster faster respawn. Link redirection should not be on here. So let's just go ahead and take that off. And then the rest of the stuff is to make come back from the dead faster. Momentous Bond, Kill an Xmas is back from the dead. Fetch to pick up loot. Animal Instinct to see the loot. Tech Enhance for longer cat buffs. Bite and Tenacious Bond for increased crit. Very nice on our Ash build. Many Pet Kit so it doesn't die. It doesn't stay dead for as long. And Charm because give me more loot. That's basically it for the build, guys. Um, I've been enjoying this one quite a bit. I think it's very, very easy. It's not as easy as Revenant, of course, or as easy as... It, actually, it might be easier than Octavia. Because with Octavia, you get the teabag constantly. And with Ash, it's just like, you just kind of hang out. You know, you don't even have to cast your other abilities. I, I, now that I cast those two abilities, I'm done. Like, that's all I need to do, really, to make this setup work. We throw out our Scourge, we get our Incarnon. We just kill everything. If an Acolyte appears, we stab it with our four. It's stunned while being stabbed, and we just shoot it while it's being stabbed by our four. So, you don't even need to cast your one ever, but you technically could. Uh, because we have Nourish giving us so much more energy, we can just, you know, re-go and viz even from zero energy. So... Very nice, reliable build. Very mindless and easy, the idea of these zombie builds. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Hope you found this one fun and helpful. Uh, there will be a zombie Octavia build probably this, later this week too, even though it was in the it was in the, the Cascade Guide. But I know a lot of people have been asking me about the specifics of that build. I will give you some Octavia build tips later in the week. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy. Peace.